Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this application of optimization, we're looking at designing a poster. You're designing a rectangular poster that's going to contain 50 square inches of printing, and it must have a 4-inch margin at the top and bottom, and a 2-inch margin at each side. We're asked to find the overall dimensions that will minimize the amount of paper that's going to be used. Whenever a geometric shape is mentioned, it's important to start drawing a picture. I'm going to start drawing a rectangular poster. And it doesn't have to be realistic. I'm not sure which way this poster is going to face, if it's gonna be you know, more vertical than horizontal, it doesn't really matter. Just draw a rectangle. We're gonna cut off or have a margin of four inches at the top and four inches at the bottom. And then we're gonna have a two inch margin on either side. And now we're interested in having 50 square inches of printing. Now we're interested in the dimensions of this piece of paper. In fact, we're trying to minimize the amount of paper used. So we're really trying to minimize the area of the entire paper. So let's give some names to the dimensions here. So let's suppose that we call the dimension along the side here X and the dimension along the bottom here Y. So the area of the paper is going to be X times Y. This is our primary equation. We need to take this equation and create a function of one variable so that we can minimize it. In other words, we're gonna find its derivative, locate the critical values, and determine where we have a minimum. But we can only do that once we have this function written in terms of just one variable. Let's look for a relationship between x and y. Well, the only other piece of information that they've given us is that the area inside of this portion of the paper is 50 square inches. Notice that we can actually write the area of this portion in terms of x and y because this dimension would be x minus eight. And this dimension is going to be y minus Four. In fact, the area on the inside part is the same as x minus 8 times y minus 4. So x minus 8 times y minus 4, the area in yellow, is equal to 50. This gives us a secondary equation which has a relationship between x and y. And the reason why that's important is because if we can rewrite one of these variables in terms of the other, we can get a function of one variable. So here's what I mean. Let's suppose that we solve for y in this equation. So I'm gonna start by dividing both sides by x minus eight. So we have y minus four equals 50 over x minus eight. And then I just need to add four to both sides and we have 50 over x minus eight plus four is equal to y. So the reason that's important is because we can take that and plug it into our primary equation and create a of x, a function that's only written in terms of x's. a of x would be x times y, but instead of y, we write what it's equal to, 50 over x minus 8 plus 4. So again, we use the primary equation, which comes from the quantity we're trying to maximize or minimize, along with a secondary equation that gives a relationship between the variables that we're using in order to get a function of one variable. This is a very important idea that we're gonna use over and over again in these types of problems. So now I'm going to use calculus techniques to minimize the function. I'm going to find the derivative, find the critical values, and use this first or second derivative test to determine if we have a max or a min. Before I decide, by the way, whether to use a first or second derivative test, I'm gonna see how complicated my first derivative is sometimes that influences which way I go with that. Okay, so I've rewritten the area function as 50x over x minus eight plus four x. I'm going to find a prime of x. First, I'm gonna take the derivative of 50x over x minus eight using the quotient rule. So I'm going to have the bottom x minus eight times the derivative of the top, which is 50, minus the top, which is 50x, times the derivative of the bottom, but that's just one, over the bottom squared. Plus, I need to take the derivative of the second term, the 4x, but that's just going to be four. All right, let's simplify a bit. We're gonna have 50x minus 50x is gonna cancel out. 
and we're just gonna be left with negative 400 over x minus eight squared plus four. Now let's observe some uh, facts about the domain of the function and of the first derivative. The original function a of x is undefined when x is eight. X is not allowed to be equal to eight. And the same thing with the derivative. So, because in either case, that would make the denominator zero. Now let's think about the natural domain of this scenario. In order to be able to subtract eight from x, x would have to be greater than or equal to eight. Actually, probably strictly greater than because you're not gonna have a dimension of zero, right? All right, so we're only really considering values that are x values greater than eight anyway, but let's just make a note Okay, we're only looking at x values greater than 8. Now let's find anywhere that a prime is equal to 0. We know where it's undefined at 8. That's the only value where it would be undefined, but let's find where it's equal to 0. So that would mean we would have negative 400 over x minus 8 quantity squared plus 4 equals 0. So one way to solve this equation would be to multiply both sides by x minus 8 squared. This would give us negative 400 plus 4 times x minus 8 squared is 0. I divided through by 4 and I moved a 100 over to the other side. So we get x minus 8 squared equals 100. By the square root property then, we have x minus 8 is plus or minus 10, which means that either x is 10 plus 8 or x is negative 10 plus 8. 18 works because that's a number bigger than 8, but negative 2 does not, so we have to throw that out. So the only critical value is going to be at 18. So now how do we confirm that in fact that is a maximum? Well, as I mentioned before, you can either use the first or second derivative test. And looking at a prime of x, I think that taking the second derivative of this guy isn't going to be too bad because we could write a prime of x as negative 400 times x minus 8 to the negative 2 plus 4. So a double prime of x would be bringing the negative 2 out front, 800 times x minus 8 to the negative 3 plus 0. Or in other words, just 800 over x minus 8 cubed. So what the second derivative test for extrema says is that anywhere that a prime is equal to 0, if you find that a double prime is a positive, you have a minimum, and if it's a negative, you have a maximum. So a double prime of 18 is going to be 800 over, 18 minus eight is 10 cubed. And so that is definitely greater than zero. So what does that tell us? Well, when you have a positive for your second derivative at a point where the first derivative was zero, this means that you have a minimum. Now, what did A represent again? And I want to be clear about this because there's potential for confusion because in this problem we're talking about two different areas. A, remember, was x times y, which was the entire area of the whole sheet of paper. And we were trying to minimize the amount of paper. We're not minimizing the writing area. The writing area is fixed at 50 square inches. We're just minimizing the amount of paper. So we just found that we get a minimum amount of paper when the dimension x is 18. So when x equals 18, we use the minimum amount of paper. But in order to answer the question that was asked, we need to give both dimensions. So we need to find y as well. So y is equal to 50 over x minus 8 plus 4. y is equal to 50 over 18 minus 8 plus 4 which is going to be 50 over 10 is five plus four is nine. So we're talking about a piece of paper, 18 inches by nine inches to minimize the amount of paper used. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.